Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about UniVTG, which is a unified video language temporal grounding based model. So let's get started. Right. So what are these video temporal grounding tasks? Uh, you know, in this video, I'll talk about three such video temporal grounding tasks. The first one being moment retrieval. So moment retrieval is a very interesting and a simple to understand task. So if you look at this video, some of those frames are shown. And if you have a query, a text query, man with curly hair speaks directly to camera. So, you know, given this entire video and some of those snapshots are shown here, what you want to do is to figure out those clips wherever a man with curly hair sort of appears uh, in, in this video, right? So appears in this video. And uh, that is what is basically shown as an interval here. So what is the moment retrieval task? Well, the moment retrieval task is about localizing consecutive temporal windows within the video, which relates to the text query, right? So uh, these are interval level tasks. So, uh, so basically moment retrieval is an interval level task, right? You are interested in finding the right interval within a particular uh, uh, video, right? And these intervals may not be just single interval. It could be like two intervals, for example, in, in this particular video. Here is another example, man with headphones having a video interview. Now, you know, you see that the guy with headphones is just basically here, and therefore that's the ground truth interval corresponding uh, to where in the video you can find man with headphones having a video interview. Um, you know, and there is a single interval here, but well, sometimes you could have two intervals or more, right? Person throwing a blanket into the vacuum. Well, in this particular case, here is where the person is throwing the blanket. In what location did I press the phone last? Well, you see the phone there, and therefore this is the right interval where you see the pressing the phone last in this video. Okay. So this is one of those uh, um, video temporal uh, grounding tasks, moment retrieval. Okay, retrieving the right moment corresponding to the text query. Another interesting task on videos is highlight detection. So the idea is that you have you're given a video and you're given basically, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you're given a title, sometimes not. And what you want to do is to just figure out the most important uh, segment in the entire video. Pick out the key segment with the highest worthiness in the video. In general, in fact, the way this task is done is that for every frame in the video, for every clip in the video, you sort of come up with a saliency score. So you call it as a curve wise task because the idea is that uh, you know, it just just focus on this green curve. So the green curve sort of tells you that, hey, given this entire video, what is the importance of each of those uh, uh, clips in the entire video, right? So essentially, uh, the larger the value, for example, here, this clip must be really important, but, uh, you know, this clip must be very less, uh, you know, much lesser important because the value is smaller, okay? So sometimes you have a query in the context, sometimes not. So when you don't have a query in the context, you could actually look at the video title as the query. So you could say poor man's meals, spicy sauce, uh, uh, spicy sausage sandwich, right? So essentially, you know, yes, there is a good spicy sausage sandwich that you can see here, and therefore you give very high importance, uh, you know, salience to this to this part, particular part. But here, this guy is just standing near a refrigerator or something, and therefore the saliency value is smaller. Okay. So there are more examples when there are no video titles also, you could basically just use the video domain as uh, as the query. So skating, and then if you basically observe, well, uh, this, this particular part does not really indicate skating, and therefore the saliency value is really low. But if you look at the green curve, it basically is very high in this part because you, you see a guy skating in the video in this part of the video. Okay. Uh, so that was a second interesting video grounding task, highlight detection. Moment retrieval, highlight detection. What is the third task? Third task is video summarization. That's a simple to understand task. You know, the idea is that you have several clips in a video and you want to find out which clip is summary worthy. So, you know, a clip is summary worthy or not. That's basically the task. So if you have desk and hands as the keywords, well, whichever, whichever clips in the video correspond to showing hands and desk is basically summary worthy versus versus not. Similarly, you could have other kinds of uh, videos like street and school, and then you basically, any clips which basically show the street or the school basically are summary worthy, but others are not, okay? So those are the three interesting uh, video temporal grounding tasks. Um, now, what is UniVTG? As the name says, it is a basically a model so as to unify the uh, the you know the pre-training data across the three tasks and also basically come up with a unified model so as to do these three tasks together. Now, doing these three tasks together makes sense because they are all video analytics based tasks. They are also temporal tasks on videos, right? So essentially, what UniVTG does is basically to take long videos, you know, and uh, essentially user text queries. 
So for example, it can take a query like when do the kids uh, when, when do the kids dance or highlight of this birthday video or summary summarize this video by food. So you know it is basically taking those moment retrieval highlight detection and the red one the, the summarization task and uh, training a single model which which is basically capable of doing these kinds of tasks. Well, it sort of pre-trains for these three tasks together and then you can actually use task specific data to fine tune on each of these three tasks moment retrieval highlight detection and video summarization and solve them. So again, to sort of reiterate, moment detection, moment retrieval is an interval-based task, right? Uh, while uh, you know summarization is basically a point-wise task because you have a point and you want to figure out whether this point clip is basically summary worthy or not. While on the other hand, the third one, the highlight detection is basically a curve-wise task where for every clip you basically want to give a saliency score. So. Um, so the idea is that to, to be able to train or to be able to gather train data for this kind of um, uh, UniVTG model, uh, you are you always consider two inputs, the video and the text query queue. You divide the video into several clips, each of uh, length L, and you know they have a centered timestamp TI. So essentially, they have a timestamp associated with them. Query has LQ tokens, so query is a text query, and therefore it has some tokens. Okay. Now, for every clip, essentially, uh, the way the pre-training data is organized is that for every clip, you have three scores, FI, DI, and SI. Now, where do you get them from? Of course, you get them from some available open source data so as to pre-train this model. Okay? So, but what are those three things? Let's try to understand them. So for every video clip, remember, not for the entire video, but for every video clip, you have these three things, FI, DI, SI. FI stands for foreground indicator. It sort of tells you whether this, this particular clip is basically in the foreground with respect to the text query or not, right? So essentially, if the if the clip, if the if the text query was a, a guy skating, you know, of course, if it is just showing the guy's hand and has no notion of skating, of course, it's not a foreground clip. Okay. Boundary offsets, it basically also so boundary offsets for a particular clip tell you. Uh, that if the clip is a foreground clip, then which part of the clip is important, right? Which part of the clip is really related to the query? So the clip may be a two second clip, and then you know only the last second, the second second is going to be very important. So in that sense, the boundary offsets will actually tell you that. So boundary offsets are in fact the distance from the center, you know, from the center which is TI on the left and the right side, which indicate the start and the end of the of the of the actual uh, you know relevant content in the clip. Saliency score, it's a number between zero and one, so it's not zero or one, it's a number between zero and one, which tells you how important this particular clip is, uh, you know, uh, uh, to, to uh, how relevant this particular clip is to the text query. Okay. So now in the three tasks that we talked about, well, they can all be considered as a video temporal grounding task uh, in general. And uh, the problem then is to collect a target clip set M, uh, which is really relevant to the text query Q. Okay. So that's basically the, uh, the, the VTG unified formulation. Now, how does this unified VTG model work, right? So essentially, of course, the unified VTG model, the way it works is that you have to first pre-train the model and then second fine-tune the model for these individual tasks. And we have three different kinds of data sets, point-wise data set, interval-wise data set, and curve-wise data set, right? So the point-wise data set, as we discussed, is useful for video summarization, interval data-wise data set is useful for moment retrieval, and curve-wise data set for highlight detection, okay? Now, interestingly, there are publicly available open source data sets which fall in these categories. For example, QFVS is for point-wise, Ego4D has point-wise labels in times of timestamp narrations, as well as uh, interval-wise labels which, labels which can be used for moment retrieval. Sherard's data set for moment retrieval, QVHL for moment retrieval, and also has like highlight detection, uh, uh, highlight detection kind of labels, and then TVSM data set for highlight detection. So what UniVTG does is to take these data sets and unify them so as to basically do pre-training. They basically, you know, so in the pipeline, UniVTG pipeline, the way pre-training works is you take any kind of labels, for example, internal labels, and then first convert them into, you know, a unified formulation by deriving those point and curve labels from them. Now the details are in the paper, but that's what you do and get a very large scale pre-trained data. You use this large scale pre-trained data so as to train, so as to pre-train this UniVTG model. And then essentially in the third step, you essentially transfer this pre-trained UniVTG model so as to by, 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 by fine-tuning on downstream task data and, and make it work for downstream tasks, the three downstream tasks, moment retrieval, highlight detection, and video summarization. So what is the model architecture and how does it, you know, how do you pre-train it? So, you know, the model architecture is a uh, pretty simple, as you see on this side. So essentially, the input is the video and the query, text query. So you use a standard video encoder, a frozen one, and also a standard text encoder, a frozen text encoder, uh, to encode the video and the query. 
you have some feed forward layers so as to get more refined, uh, you know, more refined uh, um, um, representations for the video in the query. Specifically for video use, the Clip VIT B32 model and the slow fast model so as to get the video representation and a Clip text encoder to get the text representation. So after that, you basically have a multimodal encoder, as you see here, which is basically nothing but uh, K different uh, transformer layers with the self attention sub layer and the feed forward sub layer. Of course, before you get there, you take the video embeddings and you have the text embeddings and you essentially uh, you know, add the position encodings to both of them and also the segment encodings, modality type encodings, whether it is video or text. And then you concatenate the two inputs and then give it for multimodal text, multimodal encoding, multimodal encoding, right? So as you see, there are two pathways in this architecture, the red pathway, which is basically the cross modal interaction, and then you know the orange pathway, which is basically the cross modal alignment. And at the end, you basically see these three heads. Now, of course, you expected those three heads because you have to predict the uh, the the you know uh, the F, which is basically uh, the uh, you know the foreground head, foreground or background, right? And then uh, you know you also have to predict the offsets, the start and end, and then you know you have to predict the saliency of this video clip. Okay, so therefore you have those three heads. Now. So uh, the three heads, the way they are pre-trained is using these different losses, foreground head using binary cross entropy loss, because of course you have binary classification problem, the clip is foreground or not. Uh, boundary head, you know, for localization. So basically here you want to predict the start and the end. Uh, so therefore you have a smooth L1 loss, which basically, you know, tries to compute the L1 distance between the true and the predicted start and true and the predicted end, right? And also a generalized IOU loss. So after you have a start and end predicted, you have an interval and you can compute intersection over unions uh, and, and use that as a loss as well with respect to the true uh, true interval, right? Uh, you know, first for the saliency guy, the way they pre-train this guy is very interesting. Well, uh, you, they use contrastive loss. So the idea is that, uh, uh, you know, you can take a particular video, you have several clips in it, and, uh, uh, you know, you basically have a text query coming in. So you take a particular clip, uh, that particular clip, let's say, has a saliency value of 0.8. Now you take all other clips of that video, which have a saliency less than 0.8. And then you use a contrastive loss. It's called as the intra-video contrastive learning, which basically says that the model should be able to give a higher saliency score uh, where the saliency uh, com compared to the compared to the other of uh, the other clips, you know, where the saliency score was really high. In the true saliency score was also really high. Right. So it's typical contrastive loss setup where you know the high saliency uh, clip is basically uh, given uh, uh, is preferred compared to the low saliency clips in the same video. They also do another kind of contrastive learning. It's called as the inter-video contrastive learning, where the way these contrastive pairs are generated is as follows. You take the clip and you take the text with, with high saliency as the positive guy, of course, right? And then you take the same clip with random texts from the same batch, but across videos, right? Random text, right? And you call them as negatives. And of course, you want the positive to be preferred over the negative. So that's how you compute the inter-video uh, uh, contrastive learning loss, okay? So that's how these are pre-trained. Now at inference time, of course, uh, you have to essentially uh, do inference for the three interesting uh, for the three interesting VTG tasks: moment retrieval, highlight detection, and video summarization. And you know the way they do inference is basically pretty obvious. Yeah, they essentially take the video and the query's input, run the entire inference, and then when they get the F, D, and S values. This is how they do moment retrieval. They basically consider those particular uh, clips as important where Fi is equal to one and with a high probability, and then they use that offsets di to decide which particular part of the of the clip is important moment. Okay. Highlight detection, of course, you want to essentially take those clips which have a very high probability of Fi equal to one and a very high saliency score. Video summarization, they take uh, the Fi probabilities, so very high Fi probabilities, Fi equal to one probabilities, and then you take top 2% of those clips and put it out as summary. So how does UniVTG model perform? Now they compare UniVTG model with several other models which are previously proposed. I'll not go into those details. Some of these models also use audio, by the way, right? Uh, and then they compare UniVTG model in three formats. So the first one is basically the UniVTG model, which is just the fine-tuned model on these specific tasks, moment retrieval, highlight detection, and video summarization. This is a UniVTG model with pre-training, right? So pre-training plus fine-tuning. And the last one, zero shot, is basically UniVTG model with just pre-training, no fine-tuning for the task-specific data. Okay. Of course, the best model is the one which has fine-tuning and pre-training both. 
And as you observe, this particular model is better than other baselines for both the moment retrieval and highlight detection tasks on both the metrics, the uh, R1 and uh, the recall at one, um, you know, and and uh, the mean average precision um, uh, and, and, and other kinds of metrics for highlight detection as well. Now the right side results are for video summarization, and uh, what you observe is that yes, the UniVTG model with pre-training, uh, you know, typically gives you better results compared to other baseline, other baseline methods across different subsets uh, of 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 this video summarization dataset. Okay, so in summary, in this video, I talked about UniVTG, which is the first video temporal grounding pre-training based model, which includes three interesting tasks: moment retrieval, highlight detection, and video summarization. For pre-training, they actually made use of diverse temporal annotation supervision available in open source. Uh, they made use of three kinds of supervision, point-wise levels, point, point level labels, interval label, level labels, and curve level labels. Okay. Um, so, and they actually, although I did not talk about in this video, they also use the clip teacher so as to basically try, uh, try to sort of uh, convert one kind of labels into the other kind of labels. Okay. So, and then they do massive pre-training and then they do fine tuning on uh, these three tasks, moment retrieval, highlight detection, and video summarization and show across seven different data sets uh, that they actually obtain better results compared to the state of the art baseline. So therefore, you know, as of 2023, as of today, you know, UTVG, UniVTG model is the best model which is available uh, across these kinds of data sets. Uh, you know, so if you are really interested in video analytics, doing moment retrieval, highlight detection, or video summarization, look at the UniVTG model. Okay. So hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my search on my homepage. Thank you.